Welcome to Hula with Team Battle Shop. Woo! And we're going to be making dun 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 dun, dun next line. Bell pepper pizza. Bell pepper pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am joined here by my amazing, brand new partner in crime, Team Battle Shop ambassador. Natalie. <laughs> Yay! Everyone say hello to Natalie. Hi, guys. So Natalie, where are you joining us from? How old you are? Tell us about you. So my name is Natalie Morales. I'm 17. I'm from the Bronx and I go to Careers and Sports High School. Awesome. So for those who do not know Natalie, she did such an amazing job with our Work, Learn, Grow program that we invited her on to be a Team Battlehead Ambassador. This is her first class, but she's awesome and we know she's going to rock it. <laughs> so, for our, before we get started on cooking, we're going to have to get ourselves cleaned up. Right, Natalie? Yes. So I'm here to tell you about food hygiene. So when you're in the kitchen, the first couple of things you want to do is you want to make sure that if you have hair like me, you tie it back, you put it in a monio, or if you have a bonnet or a hairnet, you can also put your hair up in the hairnet. And you want to make sure that you're washing your hands. So here at Team Battle Chef, we like to wash our hands to the happy birthday song. Not once, but two times, because we want to make sure we get into all our crevices, and we want to make sure that if you have nails like me, you want to get in your nails, because, you know, it's not sanitary to have long nails. And personally, for me, I use gloves when I'm in the kitchen, because I have, I'm not careful. The bacteria could get inside my nails, and it's not sanitary, and the bacteria could go into my food, and we don't want that. So I nope. put on gloves, and I get busy in the kitchen. That's awesome. Really great tip. I think it's really important to keep yourself nice and clean and a really great way to do that is to put some gloves on if you got those long nails some other things now to, i'm ready now you're ready some other things to note is to keep your zone clean your chef's exactly. like to say so you got to get yourself a garbage bowl this prevents you from having to go back and forth to the trash if you're as you're cooking so you just get a little bowl to put all your trash in and we are gonna be using knives today. So we are gonna be using a chef's knife. And as you're cutting with your chef's knife, you wanna make sure that you're holding it with the strongest grip. So that means that you're wrapping all of your fingers around and then putting your knife right where the knife meets the blade on the bottom. And so that means don't, put in your finger, don't put your finger on top of the knife. This feels like a very natural thing to do because it seems like you're guiding the knife with your finger, but you're actually reducing the grip because you're using three fingers versus four. And that makes a huge difference when you're cutting. So make sure they have your um, hand firmly grasping around the knife blade. And then we're also gonna be using a paring knife. So there's a difference between these two. This is a chef's knife, it's a little bigger. And then a paring knife allows for you to get little smaller and more precise incisions because we're gonna cut out the membrane of the pepper to um, make it be the base of our pizza. So make sure you have those two ready. And Lenny and Jojo are already cooking it up together, which is awesome. But we also invite for you guys to get your friends, get your mom, get your dad, get your grandma, get your uncle, whoever is hanging out in the home. Pizza is always better when it's shared. So we invite you to ask a cooking buddy to come along. So pizza can be made with so many different things we are going to be making it with a bell pepper pizza. And there's so many different colors of bell peppers, right? Yes, there is orange, there's red, like the one I'm gonna be using today. There's green, there's even purple peppers and yellow peppers. And I had no idea that there was that many color of peppers. There's so many different kinds. And we wanna know, have any of you guys eaten a bell pepper that wasn't green? We'd love to see all the different kinds of peppers that you guys have tried. Oh, I'm not allowed to vote, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's like to be on the other side of the screen. It definitely. Let me take off my gloves so I can close can out see, the poll. Then you can see what people are voting. Ooh, exactly. Who's eating other kinds? Who has eaten other kinds? Oh, we're going to give you the final countdown. 10, 9, 8, eight seven, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, and one. And the end of the poll. 
So most of you have eaten a color purple that's not green. That's awesome. So there's actually a difference between colored peppers and green peppers. And what do you guys think? Do you think a red pepper is just a more ripened green pepper? Do you think that's true or false? We're gonna put that post up for ya. What do you think a red bell pepper is? Is it the same thing as a green bell pepper? Just ripened more? Or is it a completely different kind of thing? Let's see what you think. Let's see what you think. Here come the poll. <laughs> oh, we have some, oh, oh, people are voting. It's happening. Oh, people, more people are voting. Oh, and here we go now again. 10, 9, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. <laughs> it's true. You guys Definitely are so true. smart. So actually, yes, a red bell pepper is a more ripened green bell pepper. I am so impressed that you guys know that because I didn't know that when I was your age. Me neither. Yeah. I just found that out today. Well, like two days ago. <laughs> you guys are super, super smart. So all peppers actually originated as green ones and then they mature and they ripen. So a orange pepper is a little bit riper than a yellow pepper. And then the red pepper is a little bit more riper than the orange one. And there's actually a reason why that's why they are more expensive. So red peppers you'll see are actually more expensive than green peppers because it took them a little longer for them to ripen. And that is reflected in the cost. But they all have, are full of nutrients, right? They're full of vitamin C, which helps keep your skin healthy, helps your immune system. It's also full of vitamin A, which is really helpful with your eyes to keep your eyes nice and strong. Definitely. There's lots of different ways to cook this bell pepper. You can cook it in the microwave or in the oven. So if you're cooking it in the oven, we recommend that you start preheating your oven now. And you'd be putting that up to 400 degrees. So if you're cooking in the oven, go get that baby heated up. If you want to get it in the microwave, no problem. You can just use that. All right, so we're gonna go into the chef zone to show you all the things that you need for your pizza. And we're going, and we're going down. Oh, here we I'm go. I'm gonna flip my camera so you guys can see it more clearly. Yes. So, okay. so I have my pepper, yep. my sauce, my cheese, my toppings, and the herb and the little other one I'm gonna use to top off my dressing. So what toppings? And then my garbage bowl. Okay, so my toppings are very, let me flip my camera, are very controversial. So yeah. to top my, my pizza, I'm going to be using ham, and pineapple. Ooh. Don't like it to you try it because it's really good. <laughs> so what is that typically called? Um, for regular pizza, it's called Hawaiian pizza. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a combination of sweet with the pineapple and savory with the ham. Coming yes, together exactly. to make the perfect combination of flavor. I'm keeping my veggie. So I have <laughs> for the base and then I'm gonna grate zucchini on top. And then I have a red onion for that beautiful color and also for a little bit of a little zing, a little woo, a little woo. And then I like to use the marshmallow, the, mar the marshmallow, the um, mushroom stem. So a lot of people throw these out. These actually are really full of nutrition and taste really good when you chop them up. They can be like little pepperoni. And so I'm going to chop up the base of the stem to make little pepperoni mushrooms on top of my pizza. It's that sounds good. Yeah, and that's a way that you can not waste anything, right? I always Definitely. Use, so many people throw away things that are delicious and nutritious that can be used in food that you make every day. So I don't know about you, but I'm getting really hungry looking at all this stuff. Me, me too. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. <laughs> started. So for everyone who's cooking with us, get ready because we're going to go. We're going to make it happen. We're going to start cooking. We're going to start chefing it up. You know where we're going? We're going to the chef zone. Down. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to prep our pepper. Our pepper. So this is a round object, right? So it's going to roll around all over mm -hmm. our board. And so what are we going to do to keep it stable? We're going to use a tunnel. So putting my hand on top of the pepper and I'm putting my knife through the top 
And then I'm using my body weight to cut down and through to get that beautiful chopped in half. For me, I'm going to start off with the bear claw because I cut my over a certain way. I start off with a bear claw and I cut the top off. And after I cut off the top, I use the top and cut it in the middle so that all I see is able to cut out. Awesome. So what I'm going to so do. This is a little seed in the top. Oh, let me see. Oh, super cool. Then I use the tunnel. Great. And then I cut through the middle. So I'm keeping my top on because I found that when I tested this and I didn't have the top, the um, cheese and the sauce ran off the sides. And I want to keep all my yummy, delicious ingredients inside of it. So I'm using my paring knife to cut around the top and to take that top little part off. So you're going to take your paring knife and cut around the top with it. You're also going to take your paring knife and you can type what um, Natalie was referring to earlier. This is the membrane. The white part inside of the pepper is the membrane. So you can use your paring knife to just rip that out. And you want to, you can keep it steady, you can put it down on the table, put your paring knife down and then rip it out. To get rid of the seeds, there's just a little bit of seeds left and I'm going to just wash those out really quick. And there you have it, I have one half of my bell pepper pizza ready. Ready to be transformed into a pizza. <laughs> All right. It's a beautiful bell pepper pizza. So colorful. All right, so I'm gonna put this on my plate. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my other vegetables. So I'm actually going to prep my onion. So again, we're gonna use the tunnel. I'm gonna use the tunnel for any time a object is not flat. So this allows for you to steady your ingredient. So I'm gonna again, put my hand on top of the onion. Use my knife, put it right through the center of the tunnel and use my body weight to press down. Now that it's cut in half, I can very easily take the skin off. So I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm just gonna find the outermost layer of the skin and I'm going to remove the skin so I can chop it up a lot easier. This stuff is not really edible. It's just very dry. It's not something you wanna be putting in your food. And this is a really great way, a reason to have a garbage uh, bowl close by because I very easily just throw that in there. Definitely, because it takes so much time to go back and forth to the garbage and then back to your place. So it's much more easier to get things done. So uh, to cut my onion, I actually keep this little part, the root of it on because it actually helps keep the onion together as I'm slicing it. So it's not sliding all over the place. So I keep the little bulb at the bottom on and I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna use my bear claw. So that means that I'm holding the, knife, the uh, onion with my hand and I have the very tips of my fingers up to the edge of the knife, but curled under so that I'm not chopping the fingertips off, right? And then I'm gonna use a down and forward motion to cut up the onions. While you're doing that, I'm gonna start cutting up my ham. I had to get a thick piece of ham because I like my ham to be nice and like like in um, dominoes and, and things like that. The oh. ham is nice and thick. I don't want my ham to be thin. So you see, it's thick and I'm just gonna cut it into slices and then it'll be too big. So I'm gonna cut the slices into half. Nice. And I actually like how the red onion looks not chopped up. So I'm gonna keep mm -hmm. it in really thin strips. You can see this really thin strip here. It's gonna look really beautiful on top of our bell pepper pizza. So I'm just gonna put that over to the side as I prep my zucchini. So zucchini is a very um, malleable ingredient. Does anybody know what malleable means? We're gonna get into some vocab. Natalie, Natalie, do you know what malleable means? I actually don't. So if you could enlighten me and tell me what that means, that'd be awesome. Yeah, of course, so malleable means it's able to be transformed into lots of different things. You can use it for, you can just cut it up into square rounds 
but you also mm -hmm. grate it, right? And you can mute it into bread. So you can put it in to, to thicken it up and make it more fluffy. Mm -hmm. And for this purposes, I am going to you put it on my grater. And I think it'll pair really well with the mozzarella cheese. I definitely I think so up. too. So I'm gonna take my grater. You can grate up carrots too. If you have any carrots laying around, that'd be another, another really good topping to put on top. And this is a really cool grater because it has a stand that allows for me to grate straight into it and all of the things that are grated are captured inside. So that's awesome. That's definitely much easier than the regular grater that I have. <laughs> any grater will do. So I'm just gonna grate not too much. A little bit goes a long way, especially since we're only doing half and I don't wanna overwhelm my other ingredients. So I did yeah. about an eighth of this pretty large zucchini. And so a lot of cooking is fractions. So you want to think about how you're going to divide up all of your ingredients so it's proportional and that one ingredient doesn't overwhelm all the other ingredients. So you can see that I have my zucchini grated here. And it that actually came out with a lot of zucchini, right? That's from a pretty small amount of grated of section of the zucchini but it came with a lot. Okay. So I have my onion, I have my zucchini, I have my cheese, I have my sauce. I think I'm ready to start building my pizza. How are you doing over there, Natalie? Um, I just finished cutting some of my ham in half, so now I'm going to cut my pineapple. Um, I don't think I'm going to use the whole pineapple, but I'm going to cut it into slices like I did with the ham and then cut it in half just in case I want to add, um, give it a little bit of extra flavor. Awesome. Is there anybody out there? have any questions? Esther and London, are you guys cooking with us? What ingredients are you using? Um, I'm using a bell pepper, onion, and instead of, um, I'm using shredded cheddar cheese and tomato sauce for the base You're using tomato sauce and cheddar cheese? Yeah. You put, are you putting any um, vegetables on top of that, or you just, that's going to be your base? Um, if I find any vegetables, any vegetable can go good on top. If you have any carrots, you can grate them up, like I said. You also have, if you do, I actually want to take a look in your fridge and see what you have, and I can give you some guidance. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and see what you got. All right. How you doing, Donye? What's, it looks like you got some stuff going on over there. Yeah, we have some pepperonis, some diced onions, and celery. We have feta cheese, regular cheese, and then the bell pepper with yeah. tomato sauce. That sounds so good. But what kind of cheese is the regular cheese? Is it like um, white or orange? Uh, sharp, ch ch sharp cheddar cheese. So what cheese do you think you're going to use? Are you going to use both feta and cheddar? Yes. Cool. It's going to be super cheesy and yummy. I love the combination of celery and feta, it's gonna be really fresh and delicious. Just one thing to note, if you're using feta cheese, feta cheese is naturally salty. So you don't need to add extra salt. The, the cheese is actually just very naturally salty. So you don't have to put any extra salt on there. But if you want any extra spice, you can put some red bell, red chili pepper flakes. So this would be a really good way to punch up the spice if you want. I'm also going to be putting some regular ground pepper on top. And if you want to get some more freshness, you can add some fresh herbs. So I have some fresh thyme that I'm going to be sprinkling on top too. Other options that I know our DC ladies are using are dried parsley and also dried basil. That's another great option. Any, any, any herbs you have lying around would be a really great addition to put on top of your tomato and your cheese. It's kind of a natural, beautiful flavor combination made in Italy for th hundreds of years, thousands of years, they've been doing that. So Stephanie, I want to add, if Matthew is using celery, you want to cut it very, very thin so it'll cook. If it's too thick, it's not going to soften. So yes, so it, everything is going to be cooked at the same time. So we want to make sure that all the ingredients are about the same size. So it all cooks at the same rate. Lainey and Jojo, what are you putting on your pizza? Um, onions, mm -hmm. 
Black olives. Ooh, yum. Mm, that sounds good. Is it one? Do you have one other thing too? Just mozzarella cheese. Just mozzarella cheese. Ooh, that's a great combo. I love that. It's gonna be really, really good. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. Nyla and London, what are you using for your pizza? I'm using regular tomato, tomato paste and Parmesan cheese. You stick it with a classic. They call that a margarita pizza. <laughs> That's the good stuff. <laughs> You're cl keeping it classy. I love it. All right. You can never go wrong with keeping it classy. <laughs> London, what are you doing? I see you over there working. I already took the um the stuff out of the bell pepper. Awesome. And you're gonna cut it in half now? Um yes. Awesome. Oh you're gonna are you gonna put it in? You're gonna nope. put all the ingredients on top. Okay, so that's awesome. That's a great way to make it for um a bunch of people. That's really cool. Definitely. Love that. All right. Esther, I see you. What, what vegetables you got? Um, I found some carrots. Awesome! So you can grate those up. Do you have a grater? Uh, yeah. I got a grater. Okay, great. That'll be awesome. All those combinations of flavors are going to be so good. I know a lot of people don't think about putting carrots on your pizza, but it actually is really great. It's a little, so carrots are naturally sweet. It's like nature's candy. When you cook them up, they get super, super sweet and delicious going to be really good. Stephanie, I think that we forgot to mention that this recipe is also really good for anybody who has a gluten allergy because we are substituting the regular whole crust for the pepper instead of the crust. So it's definitely good for anyone with that, with a gluten allergy. That's a great, great point. So anybody, if you have any friends or family that suffer from celiac disease, that's the disease that means that your body can't process gluten. And gluten is in what is typically in the crust of pizza that's made from flour. So the, the body, for whatever reason, just can't break it down and makes them get bad digestive problems. So to, as an alternative, you can use the bell pepper to make an amazing pizza without them having to be in any pain. So it looks like a lot of people are ready to cook, right? Looks like Lainey and Jojo are like, so excited to start making this happen. So I have my bell pepper. Now I get to layer things on, right? First thing, put the sauce in the base. So I'm putting about, for each side, for each half, I'm putting two tablespoons of sauce and then I'm spreading it around. I'm doing the same thing with this metal spoon that I have. It's much easier than just pouring it. And so you can see this, the top, keeping the top on the bell pepper, actually keeps, um, it acts like a stopper for all the marinara sauce to not get everywhere. Mm -hmm. Next, we're gonna add the cheese. Cheese time! So I'm gonna put the mozzarella cheese on. This is all grated up. Um, I'm actually using mozzarella and cheddar, like a, a little mixture that I had, and it's actually really good. But that's my pepper is, large. I'm going to be using a little bit more cheese than you guys are going to use because I like to keep my pizza very cheesy. Yeah. So now I have the base laid out. This is what all pizzas have, right? And then the mm -hmm. next thing I'm going to add are my vegetables. So I'm going to add my onion. I'm going to add little pieces of onion on top. I like to arrange it in a little pattern. Oh, there you go, see. So I'm stepping in on London, of course. What's happening? So I explained to London that um, I'm stealing one of her peppers. So <laughs> <laughs> we had made spaghetti the day before yesterday, and we had a lot of ground beef left. So I'm about to put some of that in one of the peppers for That's myself great. with some Italian seasoning. Yeah. You guys know how to cook over there. I love it. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I can do a lot bit. 
So I put my onion in and then I put my zucchini on top. Then the next step, you can see all the beautiful ingredients inside. And the next step is I'm gonna take my mushroom stem and I'm gonna make little vegetarian pepperonis. They even look like little pepperonis. Boop, boop. Boop. And then I'm going to take some time and how I'm gonna take the time off, it's actually just a long stem, right? So I take my pointer finger and my thumb and I just go along the side and all of the little leaves come out. And I put that right there. And for anybody who likes spicy, you can put a little bit of red pepper flakes on. And I'll put a little bit of the ground pepper. All right, so I'm now gonna get a plate and put some paper towel on top to prevent any splattering. So put this on top and then I'm gonna put it in the oven for two minutes because my team battle chef ambassador, Natalie, did some- You mean the microwave? You said oven, Stephanie. Oh, my bad, I'm putting it in my- <laughs> My mini, my mini, my mini oven, my microwave for two minutes. Mm -hmm. For people who are using the oven, you're gonna put it in for about eight minutes. So it'll be a little longer, but it's worth the wait, mm -hmm. I promise. All right, so I'm gonna start my microwave. If you preheat it, you could put it in for about six minutes, but if you didn't preheat it, then you should definitely put it in for eight minutes because you want the texture to be really good for the pepper in order to eat it. Look at you dropping knowledge. So this is mine that I'm gonna shove in the oven, have my loan and foil already in there, but this is my toppings and everything on it. Yeah. I'm excited to try it again. <laughs> it's good. All right, it's ladies, so how's your pizza's coming? Can you see it? Ooh, very beautiful. <laughs> they look like they're ready to go in the oven or the microwave. I am excited to see how they turn out. How you doing, Esther? Look like you're busy over there. Yeah, I'm about to put it. I just put the carrots awesome. on um, Lucy London is putting all of her amazing ingredients in the pepper. And so she yes. didn't cut hers in half, she kept hers whole, which is really smart. So because you are using a whole pepper, it might take a little longer to cook. It might, if you're putting it in the oven. Oh, for your air fryer, I did a little research for you, London. So you want it to be 12 minutes in the air fryer if you want it to be crispy. If you want it to be just a little bit warm, you can do eight minutes, but for the crispiness, you gotta do 12. Nyla, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I just put it in the microwave. Oh, cool. Now we get to see the magic come out. Ooh. I have 17 seconds left. 15, 14. Oh, oh, oh. Then I'm going to show you how it looks. It's going to be so yummy. How are you doing, Donye? I see you working. We're doing good. We just put the bell peppers in the um, oven. Cool. All right. It's coming out. Dun, da, da. Ooh, it's See so how it looks, Stephanie? Yeah, I literally heard like the bell, the, the ringy thingy on the microwave. Ringy thingy. Oh, it looked like it came out a little bit. So I'm going to put my little ingredients back inside, but I think it's going to be still really delicious. So because it definitely my is. My bell pepper was on an angle, so all the ingredients came out <laughs> when it went around in the microwave. <laughs> but you can see it still looks pretty good. I'm going to clean up the edges a little Definitely. bit. It looks like it's nice and steamed and delicious. So if yours looks like it's a little topsy-turvy like mine, don't you worry, it's still going to be delicious. I found that a lot of the food that doesn't look the prettiest actually is really, really good. Boom. 
So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. It's actually very cool to see all the colors coming out. Looks really pretty. Yeah, so we have the green from the zucchini, all the reds from the tomato, purples from the onion, and the greens from the thyme too. Ta-da, pizza. It's a bell of pepper, it's a pizza. It's <laughs> I'll wait for you to, for yours to come out before we try it so we can try it together. I got three more minutes. <laughs> so I also wanted to show you another option. We made this earlier. It's a portobello mushroom. Mm, that looks yum. So it's the same premise that we just taught you guys today, but you take the top of a portobello mushroom and you put all the same things that we did earlier, the um, tomato sauce, the cheese, the zucchini, whatever ingredients you like, and it makes a really delicious base for another vegetable pizza. And it looks very similar to one, right? It's round and beautiful. Does anybody have any pizzas that are available for us to see? I'd love to see everyone's creations. Start yet? Yes, start it. Start still cooking. <laughs> Is it unmuted? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you. Tell her ours is cooking. Ours is cooking. Cool. Can you see how it's cooking? Is it getting all burnt? Are you guys in the oven or the microwave? Are you oven or microwave? Oh, yeah. Ours are in the oven. Cool. They're getting there. Ooh. Cheese is melting. They look, they look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Another benefit of using um, a vegetable versus a flour crust is Ooh. the pizza cooks a little bit faster than a wheat crust does. Did you hear that? What cooks faster? Wheat crust? <laughs> no, the <laughs> crust cooks faster. <laughs> fresh. Super fresh. Yeah. Oh, right, I'll start with my signs. <laughs> Where'd Matthew go? Matthew, are you here? He's there. Hey Matthew, are you how do these look to you? Are you gonna try them? I really don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Yeah, I, I usually don't like Look how try. pretty that is. It's so good. <laughs> and it looks good. It's so good. Well, we're just happy to have you here, Matthew, even if you don't try. We hope it gives you some inspiration to try something. If I, if I would try, I would, um, it would taste good, I could imagine. You gotta try <laughs> some pineapple. You think you could try some pineapple for me? I really do not know. <laughs> I'm giving you the challenge to try a pineapple this week. They're delicious. That's your homework. It's, na right. it's nature's candy. It's so, so yummy. I promise when you try it, you're going to yeah, get it. Yeah, next time, next time I'm, I'm, I log in, I'm going to tell you how it tastes. Yes, I would love yeah. that. That'd be so <laughs> Oh, why? I'm in this beat, so that means that... You mean like yeah, pineapple juice? Is done. Like, no, like regular pineapple, like the pineapple fruit. Oh, I thought you meant pineapple juice. Pineapple juice is just the sugary part, which is delicious, but it's not as nutritious. You want the fiber and all that good stuff. Oh, what's up, what's up, London? How's it going? Uh, it's it's gonna be done in six minutes. It's done already. No, she said it's been done in six minutes. Oh, yeah, six minutes. Okay. And, okay. and Stephanie, while we're waiting, maybe we can go over some nutrition facts to why all these are good for you, the different ingredients. Oh, of course. It seems, like, seems like we're going to have a couple of minutes before everybody's ready. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about the nutrition benefits of peppers. And it's full of so many different vitamins. We got vitamin C, we got vitamin B6, we got vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, and potassium. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of vitamins. And yeah, so I usually I usually eat a vitamin D. Oh, well, you know, it's actually a lot better for you to get your vitamins from your food. Your body actually processes the vitamin a lot better when you eat it because it gets, when it's from a food versus a vitamin, it gets absorbed into all the cells in your body versus just going into your stomach. 
So with vitamin B6, vitamin B6 helps turn food into energy. So if you're trying to keep yourself fueled up, having peppers is a really great way to do that. It's also full of vitamin E. And vitamin E is really, really good for your skin. And as the sun starts coming out, we get some more sun time. It's good for us to be having peppers. Soda, pepper, soda pepper has a lot of vitamin E, which is really good for the food. For the skin. Yeah. Interesting. And potassium also has, a potassium is an electrolyte. Do you guys know what electrolytes are important? You guys have, have you heard of like why electrolytes are important? Keep you hydrated. Exactly. So when you're working out and you're sweating a bunch, you want to get electrolytes into your body because it keeps you hydrated and it helps your nerves and your muscles function. Really, really important if you're trying to keep yourself really strong. And all you guys are using tons of yummy cheeses. And cheese is a nutrient-dense food filled with proteins, healthy fats, and minerals. So one of the big reasons why cheese is really good for us is it's full of calcium. I'm sure you guys have heard this before, but do you guys know why calcium is good for us? Any guesses? Matthew, do you know? No. You don't know about calcium? Well, I'm going to tell you. Calcium is important, for, especially for you guys, because it helps build your bones and your teeth. And you only absorb calcium up to age 21. And then after that, your body stops absorbing calcium. So if you want strong bones for your whole life, you got to eat as much calcium as possible now so you can have really strong bones for your whole life. <laughs> I don't eat a lot of healthy stuff, which is very dumb. <laughs> okay. You can start now. You're really young. You can have a lot of time to change your habits. I actually didn't Definitely. start eating healthy until like eight years ago. So you have a lot of time to make yourself be super healthy. Don't you worry. And then a lot of people use tomato sauce and tomatoes are actually a fruit. Another thing to know, our peppers are a fruit. What? I have no idea they were a fruit either. Peppers are a fruit because the seeds are on the inside. So any ingredient has, that has fruit, uh, seeds on the inside of it are to classified as a fruit. That includes avocados, right? <laughs> Tomatoes and peppers. So lots of things that people think are vegetables are actually fruits because they have that seed on the inside of them. And tomatoes are full of fiber. All those different fibers inside of the fruit help with our digestion, which helps us keep us feeling more full. That's why when you eat vegetables and fruits, you feel fuller for a lot longer than if you eat like potato chips or something that is uh, processed because it's full of natural, full fibers that keep us feeling full for a lot longer. I think Natalie looks like she's done. You all yeah. done? I am, and I. I topped it with adobo and um, my little part, my little parsley and oregano flakes, and it came out looking like this. I don't know if you guys see it that well. Let oh, me see if so I can. Pretty. I love it. So we I'm have to try, to try it. <laughs> we have come to the final point of the. Oh wait, actually, Donnie, oh, let us see. It. I want to see your final creation. Yes, we want to see all your guys' final creation. Oh, oh wow, that looks so good. That looks good. Is the cheese underneath the sauce? No, it's not. Okay, you okay. That's it's underneath the um pepperoni. Oh gotcha. Mm. Esther, what's yours look like? Oh, I can't see it. Oh, I can't see. Is it on the screen? <laughs> Your beautiful face. <laughs> oh, that looks really good. Oh, whoa, Lainey and Jojo, that's awesome. Great job. Oh, Esther, whoa, those look so good. You guys did such a good mm -hmm. job. Esther, I just want to say you're gorgeous. I love, you love, have a beautiful smile. And you. your food looks amazing. Looks so, so good. I'm trying to put in the light. I'm trying to try to put in the light. Nyla, <laughs> how's yours coming along? Say, can I see Esther? Oh, these are just mm -hmm. had an amazing, beautiful 
she had a green pepper that was full of all kinds of ingredients. I think she's trying to make it look a little better for us. She's sprinkling some stuff on top. <laughs> what if we put like, uh, for a little more crunch, like some panko on top? Ooh, that's getting fancy. Uh. A little bit of Asian persuasion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you guys have never heard of panko crumbs before, it's breading, right? So a lot of people use panko crumbs when they're baking to get a texture on the outside of different ingredients. But you could also use it as a topping on top of things that have cheese for a little bit of extra texture too. A little fun fact. Nyla, how's yours looking? It looks good. Can we see it? Nyla. Can you see it like this? Mm, Good. What? Awesome. I love right. everyone has such a different kind. Everyone made all different kinds of different toppings. It's so cool. Uh, everything is so colorful. We got, we have a variety of peppers going on well, here. Esther, girl, can you tell us what the size? <laughs> you got carrots, you got, what do you got in there? Um, These are, um, I found it last minute. Um. They're called red like meatballs. I just chopped them up into little. Oh, I nice. Guess. You got some extra protein in there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Yeah. Next we haven't seen. This one could be from mommy. London, I see something coming out. Try everybody. This one's yours. It's yours. This one's yours. Where'd you go? Oh, it's right there. Oh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing! How the air fryer look, work for you guys? Oh, you can just put oh, look at this! Yes. Oh, yes. Wow, that looks so good. I love this. All the different spices look so yummy. I love Thank it. You. The best thing about these classes is you get to eat the thing that you made. That's why I love cooking classes so much. That's the best part. <laughs> Oh yeah. It's so cool to see how so many people made so many different things. Yeah. Claire, did we add everybody's name who made a dish today? I think so. I have you and Natalie, of course, London, Lanny and Jojo, Esther, Dunye, and Nyla. I think that's everybody. Did I miss anyone? I think we got everybody. All right. So we're now we're gonna ask who won? so hard because there's so many amazing creations. Why not? London, Esther, Don, Maven. So when you vote, I think we all should try our creations together. What do you think? I'm no. dying to try it. <laughs> you guys want to try? Otherwise, I'd be voting for people, but I can't. Me neither. I was I was thinking I could click on it and it wouldn't let me, so I couldn't. You know what? I think we all really won because at the end of the day, we all get to eat something really. Definitely, good. and we definitely get to try something new. So that's always the win-win. No, that's fine. Okay. We're in five. Oh, who won? Lady and Jojo. Oh wait, Lady and Jojo. You guys won. Lady and Jojo. Oh, we have a little draw. Congratulations, guys. Oh my gosh, so proud of you. Wow. Yeah. There's actually two people that are tied. Yeah. Yay, Esther. Congratulations. Woo! You did such a good Thank job. You. Thank you. So now it comes to the moment of truth. I invite you, you have to try ours. To grab your knife and knife and your fork and to try your pick. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Try to make sure that you get a little bit of everything in your first bite. So I got a little bit of everything. I'm going to try mine. Mmm, so good. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. It's definitely yes. delicious. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't put any. How do you like it, Lanny and Jojo? 
Looks like you like it. What do you think, Phyllis? <laughs> awesome. We need to make more. How was your uh, Hawaiian red pepper pizza? It's delicious. I can see. The, those, I can see how all those flavors would really go well together. Yeah, especially because the red pepper is, is a bit sweeter. So it definitely complements the pineapple with the ham and the cheese and the sauce. It complements everything. It's delicious. <laughs> Love it. Donye, how is it? Look, it looks like you like it. You enjoying it? Yeah, it's really good. Yay! I love it. Would you guys have ever tried this before? No, no it's our first time. No. Oh, that makes me so happy that you guys are trying new things and that you like it. It's going to be so fun. So, you guys, before you eat everything up, or if you want to try <laughs> to make it again, take a picture of your amazing recipe and post it to Instagram, and you can win a prize. What? A prize for making food? Yep. You can make, you can win a prize just for making food. And, but when you do post it, make sure that you tag Family Cook NYC and American Dairy NE and put the hashtag fuel up TBC. So if you yes. it today, you can just post it now. But if you make it again, you, you can, as long as you post it by Friday, you're eligible to win a prize. All right. Oh, I didn't get your Instagram up there. I'm sorry. Um, Natalie, oh, that's okay. what's your Instagram? Um, I'm just trying to take a picture of it. I don't even remember. I'll be like give me one second. <laughs> I have two, so let me let me give you guys my um my cooking Instagram. Give me one second. No problem. So I can get it up there. You guys treats by the... underscore nat. What is it? What is it? Treats by underscore nat. Treats by underscore Nat. So if you want to see all the amazing food that she's cooking up, she's been making all kinds of delicious, amazing things for our program. So you can see everything that she's made there. And you can always look and see what food I'm chefing up at Family Cook NYC. So you can follow us there and see what we're making. We are actually doing another class tomorrow in honor of St. Patrick's Day. I know it's a week early, but we just couldn't help ourselves. We wanted to celebrate. So we're doing a green shakshuka. It's basically green eggs and ham without the ham. <laughs> Super yummy. Have you guys ever heard of shakshuka before? Oh. It's an Israeli dish. Nope. Well, actually, I should say it's a North African dish. And it makes, you take a combination of peppers and onions and tomatoes, and you put it into a big uh, pan, and then you put eggs into it, and then you put a, you either put it in the oven or you put a lid on top and poach the eggs and it makes this delicious, yummy, like soup of tomatoes and eggs. It's so, so yummy. And if you have some uh, bread on the side, you scoop the egg with the tomato on top. It's super, super good. So I good. never heard of it. It is <laughs> amazing. So if you tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. on our Instagram at Family Cook NYC, you can see us cooking up this green shakshuka. It's going to be delish. And I'm going to be joined by my team battle chef ambassador, Keisha. It'll be so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, it's been so fun chefing it up with you today. I'm so proud of all the creations that you made, seeing all the different colors that you did and all the different flavor combinations is so, so inspiring. So thank you so much for chefing it up and trying new things. And we hope to see you soon. Definitely. Bye. 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 You killed it. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Bye. 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 b